Hello everyone, welcome back to Friday Sews. Can you believe it's Friday again? It comes around way too fast at the moment. I've got so much happening at the moment, I'm going to let you know all about what I've been up to this week. We've had a lot of rain this week, so much rain, so I had to film inside for my Wednesday, No Worries Wednesdays episode. You guys all really seem to enjoy that. I'm going to try and keep it a regular feature. And I've had heaps of people comment on Instagram and say, oh, there's another sale happening here and there's one happening here. So I've tried to share them on my Instagram stories. So if you want to make sure you don't miss out on any of those sales happening that I haven't mentioned in my episode, join me over on Instagram, follow along with Dahlia underscore society. And that way you'll be kept up to date with uh, things like new pattern releases I'd like to share. I think Spotlight was another one that was definitely mentioned that happened that day. Of course, every time I put out an episode, a sale will come out before I've had time to edit it in there. So Spotlight had 40% off fabrics and $6 patterns, which is amazing. It's great value. Uh, as we know here in Australia, our patterns are usually not $6 each. They're usually more like 20 to 30. So I always try and get them when they're marked down. Uh, sometimes I'll have two for 20, but yeah, $6 each is a really good bargain. So if you wanted to snap some of those up, it'd be a great idea. And talking about patterns, paper patterns, of course, you guys wanted to see some big fall patterns. Uh, as you know, I'm a big indie pattern fan, but I do like to have a big four occasionally just to kind of get my teeth into something a bit more old school style. And I know there's a quite a lot of great new McCall's patterns that a lot of people are loving, especially things like blouses. Um, this particular McCall's blouse I've started making. This is the one with the lace insert. Now I've just cut it all out. It's ready to go. It is, uh, I think I'm doing version, where are we? Uh, version D, but I'm lengthening it. So I'm doing the longer line with a frill around the bottom. And I've added into the length and shorten line. Now make sure when you're lengthening a pattern, you don't always just do it from the bottom. You have to really look at the pattern instruction. They usually do say lengthen it, shorten line. They'll go right across the middle of the pattern. So I usually cut along that line, separate it, and I'll measure and make sure I do the same for the front and back and pin it onto the, the uh, fabric. And that way uh, it's really to add or subtract um, you know, width or length to things without kind of having to add on bits of paper. So if you keep them separate and you know, you make sure you write your front and your back on your bottom pieces, that's one thing you may forget to do. And I will add about, yeah, four to five centimeters onto the length in the middle of that. So I've got, I've shown you before this fabric was a crepe from Spotlight and it's the bird print. I absolutely love this. Now I was thinking about doing this for one of my frugal frocks. But you, now you know I'm not making the frugal frocks with this one. That's coming next week. You have to wait and see what I've done for that. Um, this crepe is absolutely beautiful. And I thought it might really be better for kind of a transseasonal piece, like a blouse or a dress with a long sleeve. So the pattern I've picked for my frugal frocks pattern is more of a kind of mid to short length sleeve. So hopefully that's not giving it away. Um, but I've gone for a different fabric so I can get more wear of this through cooler seasons. And of course, I bought this lace insert piece to go with it. So I really have to use it for this. So I'm really excited to be making this up. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna sure we're gonna put that frill around the V. I think I might go without the frill, just the bottom one now. I think it looks nice and simple. Um, really not sure. I think something I can possibly add on, but I really think it's a bit more simple with the lace just without that frill. So I think it's great to have lots of different versions and lots of opportunities to create different looks. And then if you really like a pattern, you can make it up again and have a bit of an experiment with it. So yeah, loving loving the colors, the blue and greens together. So that will be coming very shortly. Now I'm working on filming an episode for brand new pattern releases. There has been so many new pattern releases. Of course, we're heading into that change of seasons. April is just about with us now. So we're heading into that full on autumn season here in Australia. And you guys in the Northern Hemisphere, are, I bet you're really excited to be thinking about this spring weather coming along and what you can do with your wardrobe. Hopefully you can all get let out and have a bit more freedom if you've been in lockdown. It's really something positive to look forward to and especially your beautiful spring blooms. Uh, if you're like me and you love planting bulbs, you may be seeing a lot of those starting to pop up now. So I've bought myself some daffodil bulbs and we're in the middle of planting them now and I'll put them under some beautiful birch trees so that by, by the time it's spring here in Australia, I'm hoping they'll be full on in bloom. I've also planted some sweet pea seedlings. And here in Australia, we plant them traditionally on St. Patrick's Day. 
and they're a bit of an old fashioned flower. So if you're not familiar with sweet peas, I'll put a pick up so you can see how beautiful they are. And the most gorgeous thing about them is their beautiful aroma. So the smell is just so beautiful, the perfume is so divine. So I really am excited to see them and they'll be out by the time it's our springtime here. Uh, usually about October, September, October, they'll be out. So I've, um, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> my uh, teenage son was outside and he was looking on his phone and he tripped over a big pot that I actually had just planted some seedlings in. So luckily he, uh, yeah, he only just sort of slightly cut his arm, but fortunately a smashed phone screen had to be repaired. And of course we all know how expensive that is. Uh, yeah, so I just said next time, think about putting your torch on before you walk out. And he said, mum, it's just muscle memory. I'm normally walking around that garden uh, and I know what's there, but when your mum puts pops, pots out, plants some seedlings and you don't know, it's not something you probably look for. So anyway, so luckily oh. no broken bones and a smashed phone screen is better than broken bones. So I, I did say that to him. So We'll, we'll, we'll fix it up, but I don't want to be visiting emergency rooms that time of night with any more broken bones. Thanks very much. So getting back to sewing talk, the new pattern release that you may notice yesterday was Forget Me Not Patterns have released a beautiful April dress. Don't you love it when um, actually patterns are named after the month? It brings me back to a story actually because I love the name April. It was one of the names that I had actually tentatively picked out for one of my twins uh, yeah, when I was pregnant. And we didn't choose April because my daughter Phoebe, she was about two at the time and we could sort of let her have a bit of input on the names. And my hubby had already chosen the name Charlotte. So we we're trying to find another name to go with Charlotte, but we didn't want like a rhyming name. We wanted something kind of love those Victorian style, old fashioned names. So April was one I was tossing up with. And uh, my daughter Phoebe would say to me, no April. She didn't like the name April with Charlotte. She wanted it Eliza. So isn't it funny for a two year old, she was definitely sure she wanted it to be Charlotte and Eliza, not Charlotte and April. So that's my April story. <laughs> but getting back to the dress, the forget me not pattern April dress looks absolutely beautiful. And I actually did uh, comment to Jo yesterday and that Jo's from forget me not patterns, uh, her Instagram release. Uh, it was just so stunning the way she actually uh, had the dress modeled and it looked really beautiful. And I just said to her, wow, it's a very, uh, really unusual, unique design, especially with that wavy line that you can use things like color blocking and having the option for a gathered or a non-gathered skirt. Because I tend to not go for gathered skirts. I just don't find that they they suit me. I think the it looked absolutely gorgeous on the model, but I would probably prefer the flat front but the thing I loved about the um, fact that you can give it more definition was with the free belt pattern. She had the Gemma belt, uh, tie belt pattern. So that is on sale. It is 20% off, I think, until the 1st of April. So, so get on board there and have a look at the new Forget Me Not Patterns dress because, yeah, if you want to save some money. And that's the same with the Helen's Closet March top or dress. I think he's on sale until the end of March too. So grab a bargain that way you can um, get your discount if it's a pattern you're thinking about that you'd like to make, try and get it while it's on sale. Another thing that was brought to my attention yesterday and the great thing about having a, been a subscriber to a lot of fabric shops and pattern companies is that you'll be first to know when they have a new range of fabrics or a new pattern out. So Tazuti Patterns had released a new email yesterday with their brand new Liberty lawn fabrics and boy oh boy they are absolutely stunning i'm really looking at a couple tossing up um maybe getting a couple to make some little tops with and of course we know they're a bit on the pricier side but their prints and colors are just to die for there really is no comparison i know when you find the print like that that is so unique uh, and you really have trouble finding it anywhere else sometimes you just need to splurge a little bit and maybe get a small cut so I'm thinking about making an assembly line pattern cuff top because I do know it only takes 1.25 meters of fabric. I think that will look really beautiful in uh, this Liberty fabric. So there's a couple there I'm looking at uh, getting, but I will have a brand new uh, fabric haul episode coming out uh, in the next two weeks. So probably not this next coming week, maybe the week after. So I'm waiting on a few more deliveries and getting sort of into that kind of shifting around colors. You can see I'm going more in the, to the autumnal color range. I find I, I tend to wear a lot more 
bright brights in summer like maybe more pinks things like that more blues and in the autumn winter i love things like you know, greens and burgundies and reds and rusts um yeah so it just shifts a little bit i really don't believe there is any certain color palette you should have for each season but sometimes i think things with a, maybe a dark or a black or navy background with a bright print is more suited to my wardrobe in winter and in summer it's more maybe the lighter background so that's just a personal thing i tend to stick with and it makes me feel like i'm in a summer or winter um item of clothing that way it's just a yeah, it's a kind of a feeling that it gives whether it's the cooler color background that comes out makes you feel cooler in summer and the warmer rich colors in winter so it's funny how psychologically your, your mind thinks like that and it really does uh really make you make those decisions what you pull out your wardrobe how you feel your body temperature and things like that it, it's it's really interesting to look into that i've had a really uh quite an interesting week a few ups and downs i've actually had uh, we had a bit of a scare with my mum we had uh she had a mammogram which is a routine mammogram come back with a few little um few little spots showing that weren't looking great uh we went uh it took her into the monash Moorabbin there they have a fantastic breast screen victoria ladies the nurses are fantastic the doctors are all uh, wonderful as well and they called her back after her routine mammogram to say she needs to be uh, looked at and we had to have we had to have a biopsy done uh, it was very very stressful for mum and we've all as i say we've, we've been through um losing dad with cancer and of course memories all come washing back now we like to always think positive and be proactive but as far as if you've been through caring for someone or if you yourself have dealt with cancer or been in your family it can make you very very anxious when you get that phone call so i drove mum down there and we we spent a good whole day there in hospital she had the biopsy done she had a lot of ultrasounds and they um thankfully it came back with um being no no cancer cells which were very very um very thankful for um, she does have to have a minor surgery to remove the lump that they found because it, of course it can turn nasty they want to be proactive and get it out while they can so my mum's 74 and i think most of us here in australia know that we a lot of people don't know because i didn't know myself but i did mention last year on episode that when uh, you turned 40 you are allowed to have a free it's called free but of course it's taxpayer funded but free breast screening through breast screening australia or victoria um, and that can then every two years if you keep on top of that it really helps um, when they can diagnose and detect anything in the early stages it can prevent you having to go through a lot more sort of trauma in the later years so always try to remember ladies get your breasts checked even check them yourself there's a lot of details on the internet if you look at breast screen australia or breast screen victoria they will show you exactly what you are able to do and where you can get screened for that too because i do know from memory it used to be over 50 here and they've changed it to over 40. so a lot of my friends didn't know that and of course i didn't know that either i think it's very very important it's something we can go through that's um, non-invasive and can really help detect things that that may be lingering there and of course with the whole COVID with the whole worldwide um COVID lockdowns that have been happening it's meant that a lot of people haven't had their routine checks done or things that may be pushed back surgeries pushed back as well so uh while when things are starting to open up I think it's a great time for us to yeah go and be proactive and get things like that checked and yeah I think we're very very lucky that we can do that here and um get on top of things so I'm so thankful that we um we uh, got onto that with mum and yeah she can relax a little bit more now and yeah hopefully the next month or so we can get that surgery done for her so very very feeling very blessed at the moment with that um also i want to say a big shout out and a big good luck to my beautiful friend that's over in canada and that's kathleen meadows now kathleen is a wonderful sewer she's very very supportive uh, on youtube a lot of us ladies here in the sewing community and she is having her cataract surgery done she has been waiting for this surgery for a couple of years now and of course with covid lockdown it actually locked all that down for a long time and she had no option to get that done and her eyesight has been suffering terribly and it's prevented her from doing her favorite sewing so i want to say a big big good luck to kathleen i hope everything goes really well for you 
And I do know it's her wedding anniversary as well. Um, so happy anniversary for that too. And yeah, Kathleen is a wonderful supporter of the channel. Um, she's always buying me coffee, which I very, very appreciated. Um, and of course, I appreciate all of my viewers for their beautiful comments and support. Uh, no matter what, I think it's just so nice to have developed those friendships over the years with you guys. So good luck, Kathleen. Big kisses and I hope everything goes well for you and you'll be back into that sewing before you know it. Another wonderful message I had from one of my followers from Mary Beth uh, on Instagram We're in the US and she actually wrote me a beautiful message after watching my Get to Know Friday Sews because Get to Know Friday Sews, of course, we had 10 questions to answer and it got uh, to let you guys know a bit, a bit more about our lives and what we do and why we do it. And one of the topics I brought up was the fact that I'd suffered from Bell's palsy in the um, about, probably about eight years ago now. And she actually said that um, she couldn't, couldn't believe some of the similarities between myself and a very famous sewist, Nancy Zeman. Of course, you guys in the US would know her um, really well from having her channel, her sewing channels. Unfortunately, um, Nancy passed away in 2017 from breast cancer and i think she actually uh yeah she she actually suffered from bell's palsy as well and she got it as a child as a 14 month old child she'd had an ear infection and her mother had picked her up and noticed her face had dropped so she had that paralysis right through her whole life and unfortunately for nancy that paralysis didn't actually ever repair it actually stayed um yeah it stayed paralyzed for her whole life but that didn't stop her from becoming a really really um famous sewing teacher she had uh, channel on cable for a while over there in the us and then it went on to public broadcast tv and she really uh, had some fantastic books she's got uh, written so many books when i started researching about her life i found it to be a really really interesting person and i'm uh, really looking forward to looking at her autobiography that she wrote back in 20 i think 2014 2015 um, it's called Seems Unlikely. So if any of you guys have read it, let me know because I love hearing about people's lives and their stories and what's motivated them. If she became a very, very famous businesswoman, of course, she had a range of um, notions. Nancy's notions, I think, um, took off really well there. And yeah, she really did a lot of fantastic things for the sewing community. And just looking back, a lot of her videos on YouTube I found with her presenting style, of course, I just think like, she was fantastic to watch. So really, really jealous that you guys got to, had to see her over there. And I'm watching a lot of her old reruns. And yeah, it's really, really sad that um, the sewing world lost her. Uh, just a few years back there now so um another thing that i found yeah after i spoke to mary beth and thought that that was fantastic that she reached out to let me know that but the fact that she when she uh signs off she says bye for now and it was quite spooky because i i had the goosebumps i just thought oh uh yeah she she signs off the same way i do and uh, a few of the a few of the things she does maybe the mannerisms or the way she way she talks about sewing it was yeah i could see the similarities there and i just think wow what a what a wonderful ambassador to the sewing community she was now i'm still on my healthy eating i have uh, had a couple of people mention to me that i look like i've lost weight well i actually don't weigh myself i don't don't have any scales i don't like to live life by the scales i'm feeling healthier i'm feeling a bit lighter and a little bit fitter and i think just cutting a lot of the things out of my diet that can help with my ibd could be happening could be working well and maybe the yoga and pilates could be helping a bit too but yeah i don't really i don't really weigh myself so i don't know if i've lost weight but really that's not important to me i think the most important thing is feeling great and feeling healthy just talking about the whole healthy eating Thing that i'm on i've actually found a great channel on youtube called downshiftology now lisa from downshiftology over there in the us has got a fantastic channel full of ideas for recipes just a healthy eating lifestyle it's not a diet it's more of a eating really great food nutritional value and different ideas because when you're uh, on this kind of uh, elimination diet it becomes very very hard to eat uh, to know what to eat to know what to cook especially when you're cooking for a large family um, because I've taken you know things like bread and pasta out and uh, onion and garlic and gluten and things like that dairy it really makes you think okay especially when you go you just think wow what what can I eat so you really have to put your thinking cap on but I love her recipes and her Instagram page is full of ideas for some beautiful recipes some really delicious things so loving watching down in Shiftology at the moment
Now the sun is appearing now. You're going to notice a bit of glare on the camera. So I'm going to sign off and I'm going to, uh, yeah, see you very shortly for my new pattern release episode. I think there's so, so many. It's really exciting. So I want to get onto that and show you them um, before it's too late. You can't pick up these discounts. I think it's great to get it out as soon as I can. So I'm going to catch up with you soon. Keep safe and keep sewing. Bye for now.